I want to ask you this question be from, uh, let's say, Miami or Fort Lauderdale to Freeport is about 100 miles or so. Right. That's a dangerous storm so close to us. Right. Why are we so sure that it is going to make that northern turn? Right. So when it was a, a, a very weak storm in the Caribbean and still organizing, it kind of jumped a little bit. And that caught everybody by surprise. It hit the Virgin Islands, and we didn't expect that. We thought it was going to go towards the Dominican Republic. But it was very weak at that point and disorganized. The stronger it got, the more confidence there was in the models where it would go in the short term. And then in the long term, there was uncertainty. Now we're in the short term. It's only two days away so there's confidence where it'll go in the next two days but then when you get to three four five days up the coast that's where we're not so sure so it could hit the north florida coast that's where the uncertainty is now and this has been um so problematic because of the uncertainty of the storm it's been so unpredictable so people now in miami dade and maybe lower broward county are they now in the clear so it's funny because different people will perceived in the clear different ways. Is the core going to go over us? No. We're in the clear from being crushed by the center of the hurricane. Are we in the clear from winds and power outages? I don't think so, especially in Broward where it's going to be windy for a long period of time. And sometimes we find that when the wind blows medium hard, but for a long time, tree branches just finally give out and things like that, and it, it disrupts the power grid. So it disrupts everything. And so the power grid, speaking of the power grid, I'm going to do a shameless plug for our, our, uh, <laughs> our hurricane guide. It's printable online at cbsmiami.com. This picture's from 10 years ago, and I hope they never change Stashing. it, right? <laughs> yeah. But the main thing from that to print is this one page, and we call it the radius map. And the reason why is because if you lose power and you're listening to us on one of our radio right. partners, I will describe what's going on with respect to this map here. It's got a ring at 25 and a ring at 50 and a ring at 75, and I'll show it to you right here. This is a close-up of it. So I can literally say to you, if you go to the E part here on the map and you go out 50 miles, you can find it. There's the E, there's 50, that's where the center is. Or maybe I'll say, uh, if you look on your map where it says NE and find the ring that says 100 miles near Freeport, that's where the center is. So it's for the folks that lost power two years ago in Irma and potentially could lose power this year, that if we get into that situation, we'll be using this map here, this range ring map, or as it's called, the radius map. I think we'll think of a better name for the hurricane season next year. Maybe the, the, the I don't know. We'll take suggestions on that. So that's once again available on CBSMiami.com. Look for Print the Hurricane Guide or Hurricane Guide. Load that, it's a PDF file, and then you can print just this one page. That's really what you need, because if the power goes out, you're not gonna have a printer, right? There is a satellite loop through the day, the visible satellite loop uh, going there, and you can see how impressive, in a, in a horrible way, the storm was as the center moved across the Abacos there. Now, of course, it is nighttime uh, out there. Here's what's going on right now, is 11 o'clock, 180 mile an hour winds, that's down five miles an hour. Uh, that's, it's still a way high up category five moving west at six that motion is going to slow down that one uh, latitude number was 26.6 that's the 26 line and as dr Rappaport was saying gaining latitude means going north or going up higher in the latitude numbers there's the 27 degree line so it's most likely because the possibilities of it doing crazy things is uh, decreasing now in terms of like suddenly jumping over here. It's most likely going to go right over here and then start to gain latitude, but very, very close to us, very, very close to the east coast of Florida, north of us as well. And see those little tiny wobbles. I think those are going to get a little bit bigger, but don't, don't, if you're paying too close attention to it, sometimes you can be like, oh my gosh, it's turned and going southwest. Those are, are kind of averaged out. This is a four hour loop here, so the wobbles get averaged out. If you look at it too close on too short of a time scale, then some of those wobbles don't seem to average out. Okay, we've shown this several times. This is the tropical storm force when most likely time of arrival. It's about the 50-50 chance of getting the tropical storm force winds, and that's uh, that edge right there. These would be the tropical storm force winds. These would be the hurricane force winds, and this is this evening. So we go forward into time here, and you can see by 6 a.m tomorrow morning the the arrival of tropical storm force winds most likely right there on the palm beaches and then after that 9 a.m into eastern broward and as we go to noon maybe touching northeast miami dade so and these probably wouldn't be high in tropical storm force winds they'd be average in the low inside and they wouldn't be sustained i don't think i think we're going to see these gusts where the wind blows really hard and then lulls again especially in the squalls uh, the rainy squalls that come through so that's noon on monday noon tomorrow there's 3 p.m 
and just follow along here and you see the direction of the wind will be blowing from the west to the east. There's 6 p.m. So much of Broward, most of Palm Beach County and just the northeast part of Miami Dade kind of right on that edge or at least into these tropical storm force wind range here. And then after that, there's Monday at 9 p.m. And then watch it takes a long time for this yellow area, the edge of the tropical storm force winds to retreat. That's midnight tomorrow night, 3 a.m. on Tuesday, 6 a.m. on Tuesday. And there you start to see it pulling out. 9 a.m. on Tuesday, noon on Tuesday, there's 3 p.m. on Tuesday, and then finally 6 p.m. it starts to retreat, and there goes Dorian and the wind field pulling on out of here. Here's a close-up a radar image tonight, and we were talking to Dr. Rappaport from the Hurricane Center earlier about what's going on possibly here. We'll watch it. Is the inner eye is there, and maybe a second eye wall will be forming. Once again, the intensity would come down a little bit, uh, lower than 180, but the wind field would expand a bit, and so as the center moves over here, that wind field field would get a little bit closer to the coast. That's what's going on out there in terms of the radar closer to home. We're also watching some showers and some storms. And with more on that, here's Jennifer.